In this video, we're going to revisit our good friend's decision trees, and more specifically, we're going to talk about decision tree pruning. At a high level, this is a way to avoid overfitting your decision tree, which means making it way too specific to your training data so that it's more generalized and more able to deal with your uh, testing data in a more dynamic and robust way. Okay, that's a very high level description. And I thought about it, and I think the best way to talk about this is literally just to go through an example. So here, again, our familiar setup of trying to decide whether a mystery fish is a salmon or a tuna. So you see in the very beginning, I just have 10 salmon and 10 tuna. And in my decision tree, by asking a series of questions, I get to my leaf nodes, which contain a variable number of salmon and tuna. Uh, for this example, I have three variables, and I'm not very creative in my naming. They're just called v1, v2, and v3 and they're binary variables. So they just have two different possibilities. I've denoted them by saying uh, v1 would be saying basically yes, answering yes to the v1 variable. And this little symbol, if you haven't seen it before, that one right there is not. That shows up sometimes in computer science or math. So this right branch would be saying no to the v1 variable. This is no to the v3 variable. So uh, let's go ahead and analyze the structure of this decision tree a little bit before we talk about the pruning. And this is going to help us to uh, talk about some more dynamics of decision trees maybe we didn't talk about in the intro video. So let's just go through it. So we see that the first thing is that it says yes or no to V1. So let's say we go on the yes V1 route. We see there's seven salmon and three tuna here. The next thing it does here is say yes or no to V2. Let's say we say uh, yes to V2. We go down here. There's four salmon and two tuna here. And let's say we say no to V3. So we have two salmon and one tuna here. So at this point, that's all our variables are used up. And here we would basically just decide whether it's a salmon or a tuna by making a two thirds guess it's a salmon, right? Because there's two salmon and one tuna, so two over the total three, and a one third guess that it's a tuna. And similarly, we do for all the other uh, leaf nodes here. This is a terminology I didn't use before, but each of these things in gray boxes are called leaf nodes because it's a tree and these are the leaves, all right? So um, similarly here, we would have three salmon and one tuna. So we'd make a 75% guess it's a salmon, 25% guess it's a tuna. And that's basically how it works. One thing I do want to point out is that once the decision tree branches, we can split on different variables. For example, here we split on V1. This branch right here is on V3, but its corresponding sister branch over here is on V2. So once the tree branches, you don't have to branch on the same symmetrical object or variable each time. Okay. That's one thing I wanted to make very clear. Now, there's a couple of things about this decision tree that are kind of sketchy. One of the biggest things you probably notice are some leaf nodes, namely this guy and this guy contain no observations. So what's the point of even branching? Which means that let's say if I'm right here and I'm deciding whether to branch on V2 or not, if I do branch on V2, I'm basically just gonna end up in a case where I'm in no different than where I was before. So here I was at one salmon, one tuna, here I'm at one salmon, one tuna. So why did I even branch? So that's something we're going to keep in mind. Another thing we'll keep in mind, this is a little more subtle, but right here we see that we have four salmon and two tuna. So the distribution is kind of like two thirds and one third. If I branch, I do get a different number of results. I get two salmon and one tuna, two salmon, one tuna, but the distribution is the same. There's still two thirds. So I don't really gain any predictive accuracy by making this branch. It's just kind of a waste of time and complexity for me. So we already see that maybe these are some places where we can prune the decision tree, which means don't bother taking the branch, just end it right there and you can make a decision. But maybe there's some other places in the whole tree where I can prune earlier as well, where making that decision might not help me or might help me in such a small way that it's not even worth it. So that is the crux of this thing. There's two different ways of decision tree pruning. The way we're talking about uh, right here would be pre pruning, which is when you get to a certain branch, you need to make the decision, make the decision about whether to branch or not based on how much more accuracy or uh, more predictive power you're going to get by taking that route or not taking that route. That is called pre pruning. And that's going to be what we're going to be going through in this video. There's a different way to do it, uh, which is actually considered more robust, which is post pruning, which is where you literally build out this entire tree as we've done here. And then you go through it and figure out which branches are weak um, and don't need to be included. Of course, that's more computationally expensive because you have to build the whole tree and then go search through it rather than do this process as you're building the tree. 
but we'll talk about at the end why post pruning has a couple of advantages. But again, this video is on pre pruning because it's more simple. We'll make a, a separate video on post pruning later on. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I've put a couple numbers here in purple, one, two, three, and four. These are the ones, uh, places we're gonna talk about whether we want to branch or just end the decision tree right there. Let's talk about number one first, the simplest one. Right here, before we do anything to the decision tree, we have 10 salmon and 10 tuna. So that we have basically a 50% chance of getting it correct if we just guess blindly, right? Now, let's go ahead and look at what happens if we decide to split on one. Here we would have seven salmon and we have three tuna. Here we have three salmon and seven tuna. As we saw in the introductory decision trees video, whenever you have this symmetry, uh, the predictive power at both nodes are gonna be the same. In this case, they're both 58%. If you're wondering how I got that number, uh, it's basically just by doing this seven over 10, which is 70% squared plus 30% squared. Uh, go ahead and watch the first decision tree videos. That calculation doesn't make sense to you, okay? So basically, I have a 58% chance of getting it correct if I'm at this node, 58% chance of getting it correct at this node, and there's a 50-50 shot of going to either one because there's 10 fish here, there's 10 fish here, right? So if I go ahead and incorporate all that data, I find out that if I do make this branch, I'll have a 58% chance of getting my fish correct rather than 50% if I don't take the branch. Since that's an 8% gain, that's pretty significant. We're gonna go ahead and say, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take that branch. So this kind of begs the question of, we need to set a threshold, right? We need to set some kind of uh, limit for whether or not to branch based on how much more accuracy it gives us. You can really set it at whatever is comfortable to you, however important you value each extra piece of accuracy. For us, we're gonna say 1%. So on the right corner here, I'm gonna say if it's ever greater than or equal to 1% gain, we're gonna keep it. If it's less than a 1% gain, we're gonna not take that branch and just prune everything below and stop the decision tree right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. Now we've branched at one, that's set. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at, should we branch at two? If we do the same calculation, now we have a 58% chance accuracy, right? Right here, of getting it correct. If we go through the same calculation, now we're choosing whether or not to branch on V2 here. It gets a little more complicated because the first thing we do is maintain this one half chance of 58%, which is ending up at that place right there. And then we need to go ahead and say, we have a one half chance, which is ending up at the left branch right here, but there's a sub calculation, which is a 60% chance for, because this has six elements out of these 10 right here. So 60% chance, and the correctness right here would be 56%. And we have a 40% chance because this has four elements right here. And the correctness right here would be 63%. Sorry, that got a little bit muddled right there. That's a 63% chance of getting correct if we're at that node right there. So when we do that calculation, we get 58.4%. So we see that, is it worth it going from 58% correctness to 58.4%? Well, according to our 1% threshold, it's not because this is only a 0.4% gain. So it's not enough for us to continue. So that's our first pruning right there. We're not gonna take this V2 or not V2 branch. We're gonna prune the decision tree right there. That's where it stops for that side, okay? But we still have a whole other side to consider. Uh, here, should we split on V3 or not split on V3? And something I should mention really fast is that we, we're choosing V3 as the variable here instead of V2 because uh, we're assuming that V3 gives us the best uh, gain in accuracy of going forward. So let, basically what we're saying here is that we've surveyed all of our available variables and we've said that V3 gives us the best accuracy gain, but that doesn't mean that it gives us enough to get past this 1% threshold. Let's see if it does. So three, I've omitted these calculations here. You can go through them for yourself, but we're in theory, we're going from a 58% uh, correctness to a 59.2% correctness. So this does exceed our 1% threshold, it's 1.2. So we keep uh, that branch right here. We do go ahead and go down this branch. Now let's look at four. Does four give us enough accuracy? That's gonna be like going from a 59.2%, remember that's where we ended up in the last branch, to a 59.4%. That is just a 0.2% gain that's not enough. So we're gonna break, we're gonna prune the tree right there. Notice I'm not even considering this one, right? Because 
we already talked about it. We said that if I branch right here, I'm basically not getting any new information. I'm basically just having a zero bucket and a one bucket. So that is definitely getting pruned as well. So we've pruned here, we've pruned here and pruned here, but this whole decision tree is rather messy. So I've redrawn it right here, okay? So this is the ending decision tree. This was the beginning one right here. And notice how much cleaner, how much more simple it got in the end, okay? So this is our final decision tree where if you say yes to V1, you're done. If you say no to V1, you ask whether yes or no to V3, and then you're done either way. So this whole thing, remember, gives a 59.2% accuracy because that's where we ended up. We didn't opt to go for this extra 0.2. Uh, versus if we kept the entire tree, if you did that whole calculation on our correctness, if we kept the entire tree, you would find that we would get a 59.8% accuracy. So basically we're only giving up a minus 0.6%. So that's how much worse we're doing right here but we've pruned a significant portion, portion of the decision tree, uh, which is gonna help us computationally. It's gonna help us to avoid overfitting, uh, which means that our accuracy might actually go up with our true uh, testing examples and so forth. So this is a very introductory video on pre-pruning decision trees. Now I promise to talk about why pre-pruning might have some issues that post-pruning might address. Uh, basically the issue with pre-pruning is Let's say that this tree was much, much, much bigger, right? So there's a chance, there's always a chance that I would have cut a tree early because right there, it wasn't giving me any extra gain in accuracy, but down the line, so if I had not pruned it and I kept going down the line, there's a chance that there was a branch further down that does give me a good increase in accuracy. It's just that I never got to it because that parent branch right here was not doing the trick for me, so I just cut it early. So in that way, pre-pruning is kind of a greedy method. It gets rid of branches early on, which may prove profitable down the line. Um, but in exchange, we get a very simple and more efficient pruning method. Post-pruning would build up that entire tree and search for these little minutia details um, ahead of time so that it's not making those mistakes, which means that it's more computationally expensive, uh, but it's potentially gonna give you a better accuracy in the end, okay? So we'll talk about post pruning in a future video, but this is a very quick intro to decision tree pruning.